Well, welcome everybody. Uh, I have Vincent Bridges, and we're at the Edward uh, uh, Kelly Tower in Prague. And uh, Vincent has been involved with the museum here for the last couple of years. Tell us a little bit about how you got started with the, you know, the John D. Edward Kelly story. Well, that's a long story. I was interested in John D. and Edward Kelly long before I moved to Prague. Um, but it just so happened um, I happened to move into this very building. And the first day I was here, I opened my front door, and there were two guys getting ready to go down into the basement. And they said, oh, we're thinking about starting an Edward Kelly Museum. And I said, oh, glad to meet you. I'm the world's foremost authority on Edward Kelly. So that's kind of how it started. Uh, and about six months after that, uh, we had the museum open. It's quite, a, quite an amazing space. And you've been involved with uh, the, like the missing years of Shakespeare. And this is like a, a, a going to be a book published next year. Can you tell us a little bit about the, yeah. the story that nobody knows? Yeah, well, Shakespeare was actually here uh, in the 1590s. He was working sort of as a spy for Her Majesty's Secret Service and um, was a good friend of both John Dee and Edward Kelly. So Shakespeare's plays, a lot of them had their origin here, including Midsummer Night's Dream as well as the sonnets. The Dark Lady of the Sonnets uh, is also from Prague. So a lot of Shakespeare's lost years uh, between 1586 and 1592 were actually spent here in Prague and part of it right here in this building. And what kind of evidence do you have with that? You're saying that he actually spent time with John Kelly and Edward, uh, sorry, John Dee and Edward Kelly. What, what uh, academic evidence do we have? Well, there's um, an unknown person in Dee's diary called Francis Garland, and Francis Garland and Shakespeare don't overlap. In other words, well, we know where Francis Garland was, we have no idea where Shakespeare was, and we know where Shakespeare was, there's no Francis Garland. Plus, we have some handwriting evidence from uh, the uncompleted manuscript of Sir Thomas More. That handwriting evidence matches a few notes found in Dee's diaries and sound signed Guillemus or William in Latin, and a lot of the continental uh, contemporary uh, people who commented on Shakespeare used the word Guillaume, or the French word for William, for his first name. Um, and Edward Kelly actually dedicated a poem to G.S. Gentleman, his especial good friend. So if we assume that that G.S. is Guillaume Shakespeare, then mm, there's some evidence. Uh, a lot of the evidence is circumstantial, coincidental. There's lots of things in Shakespeare's plays uh, that he could have learned and picked up here. And the fact that he was hanging out with uh, John Dee, who was probably the smartest man in Europe, explains how Shakespeare was able to go from, you know, a very bright provincial to the greatest playwright of all time. Uh, he had a good, several good teachers. So just take us through the museum a little bit. Okay, well here we are in Edward Kelly's study up in the attic of the museum. Um, this is actually the room where he did a lot of his magic work and writing and so forth. Um, the light is very nice and it gives you a sort of a feeling for what the place would have been like in, in Kelly's day. We've cleaned out the whole attic and sort of replaced um, where we think the alchemical furnaces and the lab was. It's a very entertaining space. Um, behind me, you can see the walls. At one point, there were various things painted and written on the walls uh, that have not survived the 400 years since Sir Edward's time. Uh, but this space does give you a feeling of what it would have been like here in the 16th century. So Vincent, in, in 2010, I sponsored you to come to South France, and uh, you know you're pretty famous for your Nostradamus series on Discovery TV. Can you tell us a little bit, first of all, about you know what drew you to that part of the world? What what what's special about South France? And then a little bit about your Nostradamus work, and of course we're doing a, a tour in May 2014, and. Uh, you know, again, I call it the story that nobody knows about the Mary Magdalene, the Black Madonna, the, the, the Christ Palestinian family. It's a, it's a grand story, and of course, all of these mysteries. Uh, that's, exactly why, that's exactly why you should come to southern France. <laughs> you, you've answered your own question right, right. there. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I got interested in the Holy Grail back in high school, which was a long time ago. So I've actually been interested in Southern France and the Grail mysteries and the legends uh, longer than I've been interested in Dean Kelly, believe it or not. Uh -huh. So I've done a lot of research um, trying to tie together some of the pieces that we find in Southern France. Um, there's even a connection to here in Prague and to Kelly, right. uh, because Kelly also um, went to university and studied medicine in Southern France. Uh -huh. But the broader scheme of things is in the early first century, there was an opportunity for an entirely different type of Christianity. And um, it sort of appeared out of nowhere uh, in southern France and was very powerful in that first century. And then eventually that became part of the Cathar tradition, which the Roman Catholic Church uh, completely wiped out. Mm -hmm. So what we do in Provence, we, we don't necessarily travel all the way over to Cathar country. We don't do Rin le Chateau or Rin le Bain. Mm -hmm. We focus on just what you can see on the ground in a very small region in Provence. And the region itself is very closely tied to Nostradamus. Mm -hmm. One of the places that we spend a lot of time, Saint-Rémy, is his hometown, his birthplace. And he wrote some of his quatrains about some of the local sites, uh, the antiques, the pyramid, the mausoleum, etc. So there's this ambiance of both Nostradamus and even Leonardo da Vinci and of course Vincent van Gogh mm -hmm. that make that little region special. It's very unique. And on this trip, uh, we're going to complete the work that we started back in 2010. Um, we discovered this landscape pentagram. Mm -hmm. And on this trip, we're actually going to connect the last places on the pentagram. We're going to the very last spot on the pentagram. Right. where there is a, a dark age hermitage to Saint Jean or Saint Jean, uh, the Holy Knee. And um, so we're going to tie it all together and with this particular trip we will actually have visited uh, all the sites on the pentagram. And tell us a little bit about the, the significance of the Gypsy Festival and the Black Madonna ritual. Well, the, the Gypsy Festival is not a Black Madonna, it's Sarah Kali. Um, and depending on which story, um, Sarah was one of Mary Magdalene's servants, etc. The Gypsy Festival is important because even though it's relatively recent in terms of how the festival was organized and who started it, it has very ancient roots going all the way back to King René of Anjou in the 15th century. Uh, King René is the one who discovered the bones of the two Marys and rebuilt the church in Saint Marie. So it's a very Mm, modern perspective on a very ancient festival. Mm -hmm. And it's a very good way to expose yourself to the culture of the Camargue. And, and as a friend of mine there in, in uh, St. Marie loves to say, there are gypsies and then there are gypsies. Right. And all the gypsies you can imagine, all three tribes will be in St. Marie for the uh, Santa Serra pilgrimage. So for all the gypsies out there, join us May 2014 and we'll see you there.